Welcome to the third edition of Meet the Streets, a podcast for street photographers, by a street photographer, and about street photography. Come back each week, or we'll meet a new photographer from somewhere in the world. Now, let's meet Leanne. So, for those of you who don't know, this is Leanne Edmonds. Leanne, why don't you introduce yourself? Well, hello, everybody. I'm Leanne. I'm from the deep south of Alabama, USA. Um, I have been shooting black and white film predominantly for the past two years, but um, my profession goes back way before the end. And uh, anyways, I'm looking forward to telling everybody a little bit more about what I do. That's cool. So you're down in Alabama. You're saying uh, you shoot film now. So mm -hmm. uh, question, did you start, like, uh, not even professionally, but just in general, did you start with film and then go to digital and then to film, or did you start with it digital? Was Yes, that's a good question. I literally started with black and white film in the dark room back in 1994, 96, and um, started shooting digital in 2004. And so I was like, oh, this is amazing. So I literally did not touch film for maybe 10 years. And then I went back to the dark room. Um, and now I shoot both digital and film. But, you know, I like to have that balance of both. Yeah, I can, I can imagine. Uh, I still love film because I, again, I've, I've been I've been doing this for so long that digital wasn't even like a thing. Like it was mm -hmm. like it was sci-fi. Yeah, but it was gonna. I mean, it's just I still love it, but it's so expensive, and uh, yeah, it's just crazy now. It's good with it, it just I I have the hardest time. Like every now and then I'll shoot it. And I, right, I, I, and and not I, just that, yeah, because I feel like I waste a shot if I miss something and I shoot. And then it, I don't know, like each frame does cost money. Um, so but I did have a dark room in 2010 and the chemicals on top of that was a money pit. Mm -hmm. And so I only had a dark room from a couple, for a couple of years before I was like, okay, I don't love film this much to like have, but you know, I do miss the dark room part, but I still develop my film that I just don't print in the dark room. Okay, that, I was gonna. That was, you just knocked off a question. I was gonna ask. I was gonna say whether you ask whether you do you uh, do you scan it too, or do you uh, do you just I do, develop yeah. it? Yeah, I develop it and then I scan it with the Silverfast Plus Tech eighty one hundred, which it okay. can like the resolution. Um, I don't know if they, you can see any prints in my background, but there are mm -hmm. there's a twenty by thirty that I recently printed from the Plus Tech that was scanned from That's a cool. negative. That so was pretty cool. Yeah, that's nice. Yeah, again, the uh, the, the whole again, it, it's bad enough. Like a, a roll, if I had spent a while, so I priced them out. I have uh, some that are laying around that I've had for a long time. But like a roll of Triax, if I recall, something like ten dollars uh, at B &H, mm -hmm. and H. And black and white's the cheapest film. Yeah. Um, right now, polar I hear goes about twenty dollars sometimes a roll for Portra. Yeah, I'm like, but who can do that? Thanks <laughs> Yeah, thank goodness that I don't desire to shoot color, or I would be really broke then. Because yeah, it's, so I heard. It's yeah, crazy. I heard that was at uh, Ilford is well, it's cheaper than uh, cheaper than Kodak. I've always yeah. been a huge uh, fan of, of Triax. It was my go-to film forever. But from an economic standpoint, it was good. Uh, HP five, if I recall, that's what Ilford does. Like is mm, two. Two thirds or half? Again, I'm, this is off memory, so I, I be completely no, wrong now. No, you're correct. Yeah, because Triax was my go-to as well. I would shoot 400, you know, Triax nonstop because I love the contrast, um, mm -hmm. the blacks and the whites, and um, and so I use Ilford HP5. And Kent Mirror is another Ilford film that I recently discovered that's six dollars a roll. So mm -hmm. I've been shooting some of that too. Um, but yeah, my go-to would be T like the T-Max or the Triac. Right. But it's a so little, how's, it's a thing. Hmm? Oh, I'm sorry, how's that Kent mirror? The Kent the mirror, Kent it mirror. actually is, it's not as contrasty as the Kodak film, but because I scan it, I can um, bring in the contrast in post. And in the dark room, if I was gonna print the negative in a dark room, I would just use a contrast filter. Right. to bring up that contrast because i can tell the negative is a little bit flatter but it's not enough for me to want to spend five more bucks on a roll right yeah and, and if you think about let's say with, with video i know they they tend to like to shoot it with a super flat so that you can bring all the uh the contrast into it so if you just mm -hmm. i guess think of kent mirror as uh 
like in video terms, log footage. Yeah, and they you, remind you can, me yeah. of that. Okay, that's yeah. interesting. I, I'm gonna have to, I might have to try that. Yeah, I, I, I've got my uh, again. I've still got a, a closet full of uh, film cameras and that are that I break out every now and then. And uh, it's yeah, it's less often than I'd like to. So I need to get out there with them. I know. I'd love to see how how you you know it translates to film. Um, you posting some of that um, in the future. Now on my website, so the uh, the opening page uh, is like the, the is a film shot from Paris from uh, from a number of years ago of some guys playing chess. So I've got a handful of, uh, of film stuff like, just interspersed with various digital shots on my uh, on my website. But just in general, almost every, I, for a while now, just about everything I've been shooting has been uh, has been digital. Right. Well, to me, my inspiration is film. So even when I shoot digital, I still try to make it look like film. It's just more work than film because I have to put, you know process it after the fact. And with film, you don't. You kind of let it. Yep. Go for the most part. So I remember a, a years ago, I I made the complete switch and just every now and then dab, would dabble. But you, just like you, I would uh, try to make my film, my, my digital look like film because I just mm-hmm. don't like digital straight out of the right. camera. And right. then after a while, I started going, wait a second, this is back before it was obscenely expensive. I'm like, huh, mm-hmm. I, why am I spending so much time making my digital look like film when I still have film? Right. And so I, <laughs> so I went back to shooting film like, uh, for jobs and, 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 or, offering it but yeah it's it I mean, have you probably noticed to say how long were you you were a wedding you are or were a wedding photographer um well i was a full-time wedding photographer for 10 years and retired from that stopped booking the wedding scene i do more commercial stuff but um i do have two weddings on the book this year because the clients are really cool and i know them i'm comfortable around them but I am really a timid wedding photographer if someone off the street were just to come and want to hire me because it's like, you, it's an intimate day and um, it's a long day. So weddings, I don't know, they just gave me anxiety. And 10 years, I thought, oh, you know, it'll get better. No, it got worse with time. Like where I would get physically sick before a wedding day. I just, wow. I don't know. I just couldn't do it like anymore, you know, full time mm-hmm. though, but. It was just stressful for me. Oh, well, again, it's, it's best to do again once you recognize that hey, this is not good for right. my health. Then uh, do right. you got to do what's good for you. So, what do you do now as far as like uh, kind of pay? The, so, is photography? Yeah. Now, to, to be personal here, is it, does photography pay your bills? What's good, or is it just is it a supplemental? Like, how do you? Uh, no, like- it's actually I, I consider myself a part time professional photographer. So, I will shoot professionally for a commission job maybe I want to say once a week and then, or maybe twice sometimes, but I do have a family business that um, has been in the family for, you know, three generations and it's, wow. it's a building supply company. So it's like construction. Um, I'm in the flooring department there and you'll probably see as we look through a lot of my work, um, the blue collar kind of deep South sort of, um, Vibe that a lot of my inspiration comes from working there because I deal with a lot of contractors, um, the working class, you know. Um, so to me, I feel like that's kind of my world right now. Yeah, that sounds and, like, yeah, except in the northern, I'm from the Bronx, so the uh, yeah, so I, I get the whole working class thing. That's uh huh, you talk my language, yeah. <laughs> just yeah. So I, I moved from uh, the Bronx to various spots now, I'm in Paris, but. It's, uh, again, your roots are your roots. Right. And I really feel like since the pandemic, I've really been burrowed into my roots and into my hometown, photographing the locals here. Because used to, I'd want to travel abroad or travel somewhere and find something exotic and something that seemed like a foreign concept to me. But now I'm like, I want to photograph what I can relate to or it just helps put down a foundation for me and it's a great way for me to connect to the community through my photography um that's a, yeah. in ways yeah, i wouldn't great. have done before and yeah. again that's a great realization was good because the uh everybody seems to uh, myself included every, I, I don't know anybody that didn't start off going i yeah i, I see nothing like when you when you're so close mm-hmm. to it everything seems so mm-hmm. normal and like not photographable 
Right, because we yeah. see it every day. Right. It's the mundane. Yeah, but, yeah. yeah. Like you, literally, mundane in a different place is somehow uh-huh. exotic. A person, exactly. e- yeah, a person eating a sandwich at a cafe in Paris is woo, but a per- the same person know. eating a sandwich in front of a deli in uh uh-huh. in by whatever store down there, mm-hmm. not so exotic. But what it's exactly. It mm-hmm. took traveling, though, for me to actually open my eyes and realize, well, the South has their own culture. It has their own niche, their own kind of way of life that sometimes people can glamorize or sometimes have a misunderstanding about it. But um, like Forrest Gump, um, a lot of movies based in the South, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, so I don't know. I feel like traveling actually made me realize, wow, I have this in my backyard, you know. Which is funny, I'm on street photography mentor podcast or, you know, the YouTube channel because there's not a lot of street photographers in the country. <laughs> you know, it's kind yeah. of like I had to kind of make it my own. Um, I don't ever come across street photographers out here. Yeah, it's not um, like New York where you see it, right. you, you, you trip over them. They're everywhere because there's a yeah. lot to photograph there. But there's a lot to photograph pretty much everywhere. You just mm-hmm. have to train your eye to, uh, to and the, the beauty is when you come to that realization, when, because otherwise there's plenty of places that are going to go undocumented because people don't feel inspired right. to go out and photograph the mundane in a, in some place that they're always trying to get out of. Mm-hmm. But let's go without doing this, then you don't have a historical record of these things. So th- these, right. these best records are made by people like you that are recognizing that what's good wow there is a lot to photograph and if i don't do it it's not getting done i feel it also have an advantage here because in small towns in the south they're kind of closed off um if you're an outsider it's harder for you to go just show up with your camera like there is a drag strip where you go race cars um just down like about eight miles from my house that you know it's fun to visit and then you've got you know the back roads the rope swing at a creek that I'm all the time photographing. Um, and, you know, it's like they just get to know you and they, and that's the best way for me to be invisible is for them to be comfortable around me when right. I'm out photographing them. Yeah. Again, I, if I were to walk into those same situations, I would stand out like a sore thumb. They're like, who's that guy? Why does he have a camera? You can just blend in and you're going to get the real stuff. Right. I love that. Yeah, I mean, just thinking, oh, uh, no, I, I, I recognize some of the places having been following your work for a while. So when you're, you're mentioning, let's go the uh, the rope mm-hmm. swing. And uh, mm-hmm. I, I, I remember there's a dirt track. I think it's a dirt track. Uh, I mm-hmm. know there's a racetrack in one of the pictures we're going to show. But yeah. Uh, yeah, again, you don't, I, what is that? Uh, a few years ago, I just randomly happened across a, a dirt track in uh, Tonopah, Nevada. And because I had nothing to do, we just stopped for the night. And I'm like, yeah. let me go. This. Turns out, I can, if I was more up on this, it's the most popular racing sport, probably one of the most popular sports in all of America. Okay, there are more dirt track racers and more dirt yeah. track racing fans than there are fans, I think, of anything else. It's insane how how popular that sport is. And if you're from, like, I'm from New York City. Yeah. No, no idea. <laughs> no idea. So like you miss a whole without people photographing these things, you miss an entire swath. Like it, if something were to ever happen one day, this goes by the wayside. And so yeah, again, this is my I, I moved returned back to my hometown. I lived away for a little bit, and I came back. And um, about that ten year time span that I was gone from home, it became almost like suburban night. You know, it was like subdivisions being built, targets being put here. Um, the old generations were dying off. And I'm like, oh my gosh, it, I want to document my hometown on how I remember it. So I feel like I've been shooting maybe a roll a week for two years. And I've cool. developed a big body of work and I have shows that I'm doing with it. And it's just been a really great adventure for me um, to show people kind of how I see my hometown or... Share with that's so I definitely have more questions, but let's get into some uh, into some of your work so people yeah. can see what we're talking about uh, or more what you're talking about. There we go. All right. So yeah, give us uh, some backstory, if you would. Okay. These little girls were just so carefree, and I was actually at a friend's house. We were barbecuing in the backyard. It was the middle of summer. 
And a lot of times that catch my attention when I decide if I want to shoot the image or not is if it's relatable. And for some reason, these two girls reminded me of me growing up in the 80s. Um, and I don't know, just kind of resonated with me. So I decided to take their photo. On you growing up um, again, pardon me, but you don't look like you grew up in the 80s. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Well, yes, it, time has snuck by. It, I. <laughs> Yeah, uh, again, I, I remember the '80s well, but my, I didn't. I usually think that was because I'm the oldest guy in the room. So, oh. <laughs> I'm, I'm pretty sure I still am, but uh, well, that's good well, to know. You know <laughs> yeah, it's just to me. I feel like um, I want my work not to feel dated. I want it to feel timeless in a sense that every generation can relate to this shot in one way or another. Whether it be oh, when I was a little girl, I remember my first, big, you know, first friend, or just you know, lounging around in bathing suits in the backyard on a summer day. That's very cool. Let's, let's see. There we go. And so what do we yes. have here? This one, I was actually on vacation. My husband and I, we were sitting up at the Tiki Bar. I had my camera in my lap, so it was just a comical moment. I mean, this is another relatable scene where I can relate being a young girl, being like, exhausted from the beach day and then the dad just being tuckered out like he's ready to go home mm -hmm. <laughs> so i don't know and then the golf course in the back i don't know there's just a lot going on in this scene that just maybe made me want to capture this moment um so, so two questions I, yeah, yeah. Where, where was this this was in hilton head south carolina so okay. it's still considered the southern region but mm -hmm. hilton head is almost like a preppy sort of luxurious place to visit but at the same time it's kind of you can find a little bit of redneckness in it too you know when it comes to southern roots and i don't know to me i felt like the folding lawn chair metal lawn chair the american flag mm -hmm. um to me it just was like oh this is such a southern american uh vacation you yeah. know yeah again i i not that i, I might i live here in europe but what's good i don't think like a European. So I, this strikes me as what I would imagine a bunch of Europeans probably think of uh, when they when they're picture of the United States. Again, yes. it's, it's either cowboy hats and, uh, and uh -huh. horses or this. It's rarely right. ever like New York or uh, or Jersey or Chicago. It's like the, which this or uh, or this, the, the South or the West. Mm -hmm. Right. So it, it's a gorgeous image. Thank you. Oh, yeah. oh, very cool. Yeah, now so, this is, um, you know, I was just kind of wandering around uh, Columbus, Mississippi, because I had just installed my artwork at the Columbus uh, Museum of Art there for a show, and I had my camera around. And I don't know, this was just a group of young boys leaving the gymnasium from playing basketball, and I just loved how there was the ringleader in the center that kind of you could tell he kind of dictated the group and I just naturally walked up to them and said, Hey, and let them pose how they want it. That's the thing. I, I love just to see how people naturally are in front of the camera. Some are reserved, some are confident, you know, some are awkward. <laughs> so yeah. I just let them be themselves and that's what I got. So, you know, I love that. Again, I, 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 yeah, I, I have a, a similar outlook on on how you, if you approach a group and let them pose themselves, because you you can tell, like if you were to pose them, it tells mm -hmm. about you. Right. If they pose yeah, themselves, if, you, if they pose themselves, uh -huh. then you know how the the social uh, arrangement of the uh, right. members of the group. So yeah, yeah. I love That's I love your idea. I love how you do that. Thank you. It's a great shot. Thank you. Uh, this is again. If you yeah. didn't say that within the South, would you go, oh, this is, this is right. the South. Although this actually looks like it could be Eastern Europe as well. Oh, you've got a great eye because it's actually a Russian Orthodox church. And it's a very small, this is a community near my home that I walk the dogs pretty regularly there. So over the past three or four years, I've gotten familiar with the faces there. Um, and this is the Russian Orthodox church there in okay. Brookside, Alabama. Um, it's an old Polish mining town in uh, Eastern, like a Slavic uh, community. 
and it's literally a ghost town, but they still have their church services there. And um, it was so by chance that I caught this moment because I've had my dogs with me and it's kind of near where I walk. They were blessing the creek that day and I had my camera. Wow. I'm like, this is what street photography is about. Timing. Yeah, totally. You know, good totally. timing. So, so question, uh, not specifically about this image, but with you shooting film, and I know that you shoot with a Nikon S2, if I recall. But do you mm -hmm. also, yeah. but do you also use uh, like prior to getting the S2? Do you do you switch between various film cameras, or do you, or are you one hundred percent rangefinder? Yes, because this actually was taken with my Nikon N80, and the image before that was taken with the Nikon S2, which was the okay. nineteen. This was with my nineteen fifties. And I've got it right here. It sits right here in my office. And I can kind of show you guys if you're not familiar with the, it's a range finder. So it's going to be totally different from uh, SLR. Right. So it's definitely foreign for me to use, but I've gotten a little better with it the past couple of years since I've had it. Um, well, apparently so. <laughs> but, uh, so it takes wonderful, it's a fun, fun photo, uh, camera to shoot. And then when I need a wider angle lens, I use my Nikon N80, which that was taken with a 35 millimeter lens. Gotcha. Um, cool. to get more so, of the story. Yeah. Right. And there's, that's, that's your, that's yeah, your that's, S2 right there. This is S2, yeah, you can even see it yeah, in the reflection. Yep. So that's Gene, the barber, local barber. Uh, he's been here since I was born. And um, every now and then I drop by, I see his car parked there. I walk in and say, hey, let me take some photos. And so there he is, just doing his thing. And I want to put my face in it, so. That's cool. And again, so looking at this, I see uh, Paul Bear Bryant on a, uh, yes. on, on a, I haven't, he, Again, for the, for those of us old enough to remember who the bear is, uh, mm -hmm. that hat is a giveaway. I, he, uh -huh. I, it kills me to think again, just not to bring football into the whole thing, but to, to I think, love, yeah, I love that you know about that. That's great. To yeah. think that what's called Saban could possibly hold a candle to Barry Bryant makes my heart just like. <laughs> I know. I I agree because I, I graduated from UA from University of Alabama and. Um, the whole time I was there, we were on probation, football probation. So yeah. we didn't have a great team. We had four coaches in four years. I mean, it was like, but it was the most fun time because, you know, we had, it wasn't just bombarded with outsiders coming into our town. But mm -hmm. when Saban got there, it was like a whole other, a whole other university for sure. Yeah. yeah so I, I, I didn't mean to digress, but as soon as I saw, oh, yeah, I, yeah. I haven't seen, Again, every now and then I think of, of Bear Bryant when I think of um, the Crimson Tide, which again is not a it's not a common thought in my uh, my head. But right. when it pops in, he's who pops into my head, and then I'm like, oh, then and I heard his recent yeah. that Saban was out. But again, that was a class act right there. That was a good guy. Well, yeah, thank you for appreciating that because we don't have a, a pro football league here because everything is pretty much college football in Alabama. That's kind of like the popular sport here, but. Yep. But yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, excellent. Uh -huh. You're you're again. See the, the this you're showing here, not just here, but throughout your work so far. What I, I've mentioned in uh, in the past, the similar, the, I, not so much similarity, but the uh, I guess similarity. Uh, yeah. Street photography and documentary photography are like first cousins. Like they're mm -hmm. uh, the only only I can main difference I see from good. Uh, street photography, and well, my vert, what I think of is good street photography and documentary is documentary. You kind of go out with purpose. You have a, you have a start, a middle, and an end. Mm -hmm. And uh, street photography, for the most part, is you're going out and whatever. And, you know, over the course of time, you can, with enough of it, you can compile it right. into a documentary. But if you go out there specifically for documentary, and you've got what's called a, again, a, a finite space that you're trying to fit the whole story into but your work looks so and i i love documentary works with, with the things i like about street photography but the way you do it is so documentary i love that so i just want to say like i it really feels not so much that uh you're trying to capture uh funny again there's just so many different ways to go about street photography but yeah yours is so classic and uh 
and again, beautifully done. So there's a long way to get around to saying that, but there we go. Well, thank you. I mean, this moment to me is precious because you can see them scattering out of the way. They were playing on the sidewalk in Selma, Alabama, and I had, well, I was walking Lola and Millie on a leash, and so they scattered away because Millie, you know, they're kind of bully breeds. They're big or, you know, kind of hyper in a sense for getting, they just look kind of startled. So, gotcha. and I, it was a very comical scene for me because I was walking two dogs and I had my, actually I shot that with the S2 as well. And mm -hmm. I like had to pre-focus with the rangefinder because you have to guess your distance before you shoot it. And I put it at seven feet and I was like, I hope something turned out and, and it did. And I was you happy because that was, you know, it was a sweet memory for me. And you, and you did this with a 50. So without even a 50, exactly. Yeah, yeah. that's amazing uh -huh. because uh, trying, yeah, it, that's not something for the faint of heart to try to uh, to zone focus with a 50. Right, and I just focused on that boy holding his baby brother in the back. I put it on seven feet there, and I think my f stop was more like around f eight, so it oh. wasn't such a narrow depth of field to yeah, focus but, on, yeah. and it brought it kind of where you get the details of the foreground and the yep. back. Yeah, you, you nailed it. Absolutely nailed Thank it. You. That's, there we go. Okay, there we go. Yeah, and, this is a net, uh, that shot that you just showed and then this one were taken within a week apart because this was towards Lola's um, birthday and we were taken within a week apart. End of her life, and uh, so all these memories are kind of bittersweet for me. I love that I was able to grab the memories, but at the same time, it's like my direction of photography changed after she passed away, and it's just kind of like um, so. Yeah, do the dogs really are kind of a big part of my photography, and you wouldn't think so with street photography, but um, but yeah, they really are. I include them with so much of what I do. Uh, explain that. Like, I, I think I recall, again, mm -hmm. having followed your reading, re following up on that, but if yeah, you just explain um, to people what you mean by that. So basically, having my dogs photographing people, I feel more accepted. I feel that it's relatable for most people, and they it's a conversation starter, and I feel not so alone on the street. Like sometimes um, if I go somewhere by myself, I've got company and I don't like photographing in large groups when I'm out on a mission because right. I get distracted talking, but dogs welcome, you welcome dogs into your solitude. You don't have to talk to them. They're just there. They're, you know, but when you're shooting with people, they're in your company and you're like, it diverts your attention away for me. Cool. And so I see, uh, it looks like a reflection of two dogs and yeah. a dog on the other side of the glass. So wh where's Lola in this? Lola is on the right side. She's got the big ears. She's looking towards the right and then okay. I'm in the middle. And then Lil, uh, Millie is looking towards the left and they don't even recognize that little Jack Russell in the window. And <laughs> I don't know, it was just such a funny moment that I was like, they don't even see that dog. And I don't know, it's like, and the way they like all were kind of lined up, um, yeah. just kind of made the symmetry pleasing. So I have to think that, yeah, yeah, that maybe your dogs are better behaved than mine because I, I think my Lola would have been trying to break through that glass, and she's a, she's a small dog, but she uh -huh. would be she'd be losing her she, wigging out. <laughs> well, you should see some moments like at the rope swing. If we get to those shots, they're mm -hmm. off the. Uh, lead a lot of times and Lola would always chase after people jumping into the creek and I'm just you know kind of would have to put her back on the lead but um, Millie is more reserved and shy and she doesn't leave my side um, so she can even be off leash and be that close to me That's so cool. I couldn't have two hyper dogs because I just wouldn't be able to photograph but right. you know I, it, I, it has its I, challenges I hear you. I, I can't even imagine bringing. I've again. I take a lot of times take my camera out on dog walks, but very rarely can I do anything with it because the dogs are going nuts. It's just there in case. Uh, yeah. <laughs> okay. It's so time, and, mm -hmm. and I think it helps that I exercise Rio uh, 
my new foster. Well, he's a foster fail, but he's my new adoption uh, that I had gotten last May. Um, Cause I run him a lot. So he's a high energy dog and I have to run him or he will get anxious and destructive. So it keeps me in shape too. So that helps. <laughs> <laughs> well, and this, uh, what do we have here? This is actually, um, my cousin, Billy Joe, his funeral. And it's a very country, um, funeral out in Mississippi. And I had my camera in my purse. And it was actually the N80 because it's the wide angle lens. Um, and my distant cousin, I don't even know his name. It just looked like he didn't understand death or maybe he was comprehending it all because he just looked in another place. And so it was after the ceremony and uh, he was just sitting there. And so it just kind of shows you how displaced people are after death. Sometimes like mm -hmm. life is continuing, but yet you know, it's sort of because that lady on the right side of the screen is checking her watch. Like, yep. you know, time's still existing. It's going on. We've got to go somewhere next. And right. then, I don't know, it's just kind of like shows that in between after death, you know, like what people do, like carries on. Yeah, I, I like yeah the woman checking her watch. I was focusing in on her, thinking about the uh, again. There, there's a number of different metaphors you can come through, come to when looking at stuff like this. And again, the, the her looking at the time, I, I, uh, kind of just like you said, I don't want to read anything into it beyond that. But uh, right. yeah, the idea was her, she has time, and the 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 poor person who's uh, they're there for has no more. Right. Yeah. And. So I feel like it has a good narrative about it. Um, and a lot of times I want my work to be universally relatable when it comes to um, certain moments. And it's sometimes it's like, well, should I have my camera or should I not have my camera? But in the end, I felt the photographer in me wanted to document that time. Because we need to think about things like this too. It's not just all cheerio you know like wedding photography 100 percent. again it, that's what you say with uh if you i'm sure you photo well obviously you photograph families at some point uh yeah. i think some of the best pictures are when the kids are when they're losing it and they're bouncing yes, off stuff or they're crying when people are mm -hmm. like oh sorry but so my, my child doesn't usually act like this i'm like you want to go you're lying to me because uh right. everybody's kid does this and if you pretend if you don't have pictures of it right you, then what's going to you're going to remember did, it, but it, yeah. this, is, this is life. I lost a lot of my client base um, when I started focusing more on documentary and not so much glam and perfect, pretty photos because I just, I'm the type of person, if I don't believe in it, I'm not going to shoot it. I can't fake it, you know? And so as I evolved and grew as an artist, as a photographer, my clients kind of stayed the same and they wanted those. It just got boring for me. Perfection is boring anyway. So. Right. I just was, I kind of grew out of that. And so. Yeah, I love, um, I love to hear that. Again, so many people just end up hating what they do because they're continuously trying to make other people happy versus uh -huh. themselves. Like once once yeah. you can recognize that what's going on, hey, this is for you. They also, like the reason they're buying it is because you enjoy doing it. When you stop enjoying doing it, the work will yeah, suffer. Yeah, Yeah. So, beautiful. I hear, and here's the uh, that creek you're talking about. Oh, yes. Or, the rope swing where mm -hmm. the locals go party on the weekends. <laughs> Love it. So, and they just really literally wear their underwear, their t shirts, um, whatever. You know, it's very country. And I love it because I don't know, it just feels like it's not the clean, pristine blue waters of a pool or I don't know. It's kind of like rugged. Um, has character to it and the people right. there are just so i don't know they're just so fun they're just you know so carefree i i like it i keep going back for more <laughs> yeah I, again from a, a person from the city like raised in cities this is like out of a movie and then for people which is entertaining to look at and then yeah. also for people that are, that are grew up with this it brings you best so it, it succeeds with everybody but it either brings you there because you recognize it from doing it, or it just appears like it's out of a movie that you wish you were a part of. 
Yeah. Well, and I grew up going to this rope swing. I, and the sad part is they cut down the tree just this past mm. summer. So, because it died. Um, but it's definitely a place that I still go and take the dogs. It's just not going to have the rope swing this year. No, it's sad. So, yeah. Ah, here we go. So is that a, is that a dirt track or is that uh is that that's actually the savory short track so it's okay. going to be paved hey, yeah that but there are dirt tracks and when you were speaking about that because there are some i have a cousin that races dirt tracks um and i have yet to have gone to take photos of any of his races because they're further away right but um but yeah it's a fun fun experience to go to you know, yeah, it, it, it's culture again, it, and, and so ready to be photographed. Oh, yes. The people, the audience. And I mean, just so, I don't know, I, it's just not so cookie cut. And that's what I love. You will find me seeking out things that are not just so um, normal, I guess. That's kind of what stands out to me. Like even the little boys covering their ears. Mm -hmm. um, and um, I was watching them because when I sit down, I don't just start shooting. I observe the crowd first to kind of get a feel on where I want to focus. And I'll just kind of sit there. I won't stalk them, but, you know, I kind of keep my eye out and then I know they're going to do something. And then I'm like, ah, oh, there we go. I got it. You know, Excellent. it doesn't just happen. So, <laughs> oh, yeah, I get it. Because. So many people would probably concentrate on the cars being at the track, but the, mm -hmm. but the, the cars are just a, like to a photographer, right. unless you're mm -hmm. a sports photographer, they are, in which case then that's your job. But the interest, like in so many ways, like is never actually the th the shiny thing that draws everyone's attention. The, I I believe that was so that the, uh, and it seems that you do, that the, uh, the true stories are actually behind where people aren't usually looking. Right. Yeah, that's true. Like, and I started out shooting rodeos and stuff because I have a good friend that's a barrel racer. Wow. And I would go to the rodeos with her. So I have, I think that's what Tommy got on the grid. I put me on the grid with a lot of um, more documentary style stuff was my rodeo scenes. But I didn't put any of those in here because they're all digital. That's before I gotcha. returned to film. But that planted the seed for stuff like this, mm -hmm. for sure. Well, yeah, again, just... There would be no reason not to, even though it's digital, the uh, what you shoot it with has very little to do. And again, I, I love the fact we're talking film, but in the end, it really comes down to less about what you captured on and more what how you capture it. So the uh, yeah, your the way you see is what makes your your images are beautiful and they're unique, and it has nothing to do with what you shot them with. And so, yeah. so, so yeah, I I, I, yeah, I wish I, I wish you had put some uh, of the the rodeo stuff. I would have loved to have uh, seen it. I know. I was thinking of something consistent because the rodeos stuff was done in 2020 and 2021. Okay. And, um, and you know, I started that because in 2020, obviously the pandemic and everything shut down. But in the deep south, in the rural woods of Alabama, they were having rodeos. And I know that was frowned upon, but I wanted to go out and shoot. So mm -hmm. I went <laughs> mm -hmm. and I took photos and, you know, it was um kind of triggered my need for for more stuff like this so nice. good came from it you know oh yeah totally but yeah so Not I, uh, yes um that's the rope swing that was actually taken with the nikon s2 and i was walking the dogs in the creek so um it was from that vantage point and it just seemed to be a fun moment. I call it boys of summer because they literally are teenage boys just picking it, having fun, listening to music. Um, I don't know. And it just reminded me of the freedom of being young. It just felt like something I remember, I recall being that age. You know, it, it's, it's nice to have memories like that to trigger, oh, you know, something that I used to do as a kid. Yeah, the composition here is beautiful. The the moment you caught it, like right on with that kid, like just yeah. seconds from like, two seconds from uh, getting all like absolutely I know. plunged in the cold. Yeah, yeah, it, 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 I, yeah, you got that. But again, the uh, just the the shape again between the uh, like the almost like this triangle made by the uh, the rope and then the tree coming down. 
going right into the kids that are looks like he's got either drinking or doing something. That go, the, the guy the on the up. left. Yeah. Uh, he's taking a photo of him. Actually, oh, really? it was kind of funny. Yeah. So that'd be fun. That would be fun to see what he got. <laughs> I know. I would like that. But you yeah. know, the comp composition of this is great, and it's, it's a wonderful mm -hmm. moment too. Yeah, it was done with that Nikon S2, so mm -hmm. it basically, I, it's a slow camera, so I literally had to wait for him to let go, and that's when I took it, because if I knew I pushed it too soon, I, I couldn't wind it fast enough to get the other shot, so I just had one shot of him. So with that in mind, so what about uh, the the S2 or range finders in general, because again, for the most part, so it's like, whether it's the S2, the Contax, uh, a Leica, you, you have to manually focus, you've got to advance it. What is it about that when you could have uh, auto, even, even with film, you can have auto focus, auto exposure, this, right. the whole thing. Why is it that you like this? I am so glad you asked because I was going to bring it up eventually. I feel like, um, not that digital photographer digital photography is easy it's just i like limitation because it helps me grow like through anything and um i guess i have to revert back to my running with training for a marathon it's like why do you want to force yourself to run 26.2 miles well it's because of the training it, you grow into someone else you i don't know so i feel like i've grown as a photographer since i picked up that uh manual camera the nikon s2 i feel like i'm more patient i know when to act when not to act uh, i feel like with digital years of shooting digital i just became a prey and spray girl where i would just shoot without thinking um mm -hmm. you know a lot of times so i just like limitations uh, I, yeah, I, perfect i i absolutely 100 percent agree with everything you just said you just said it so much better than I could have. So uh, oh. that, that's um, again, you, that was that was a, in what I think a, a great explanation of why I also like shooting with range riders. The uh, yeah. it's yeah, so cool. Like, nothing to add to that. <laughs> oh, thanks. I'm glad I got it right first no, time. I'm well, a, no. I tend well, to well, again, it's not it's not like what's going to have the uh, the say on anything. I just happen to agree with you, per, but yeah, to the to, okay. to the letter. So again, you, well, I'm glad you relate to that because sometimes I feel like, oh, I shoot film. I'm not being prestigious. I'm not wanting to be like, you know, films better than digital. No, I think to me, digital, the definition, everything is just so much more advanced than film. But it's not about that for me. It's about growing into better photographer, you know, like a stronger photographer for me, for my goals. And that's why I shoot film. But I'm still shooting digital with clients all the time. Um, right. It also separates my work from my personal when I can separate the two. All right. Very cool. So. This is adorable. Actually, the little girl on the uh, and the, the with the ears. Yes. It looks it looks like uh, my youngest daughter's oh. like, long time uh, best friend when she was a little girl. Yeah. Not she, again, obviously not. <laughs> Uh, well, I, this was taken actually just back in December. So just a couple months ago, I was at a festival. It's the, what's it called? Like a Christmas village, like German village that they have pop-ups. And um, it, she just seemed pouty, ready to go. Her family's still hanging out. And I literally got one shot and I didn't even know if I got it or not. And then she looked away. And mm. so I was like, well, did I get it? Did I not? But um, it, this was with my Nikon N80 35 millimeter. So it definitely was a, you know, um, easier frame to capture than with the range finder. But, right. um, but yeah, it was just something that was relatable to me uh, being a kid at one time. I, I was really notorious for pouting too. So I, I totally... <laughs> Totally got that moment. <laughs> That's great. Uh, this is yeah. again just so totally, yeah. So what do we, what do we have here? This is the same area where the Russian Orthodox Church is and the rope swing. This is the houses that are lined up alongside. It, there's a railroad track, you know, in front of their house, and then there's the creek behind the house. So 
it, I was walking the dogs back from the creek or something, and they were out in their yard, and they know the dogs by now. They're like, oh, you know, Millie, you know, Rio. And so I stopped by and talked to them and grabbed a frame or two. That's a lease. I've gotten to know their names uh, cool. over the years. So they're able to kind of be a little more comfortable around me, yeah, which this is, is nice. Yeah. This is definitely the S2. What's that? Oh, no, this, this is, is actually yeah. what I think, um, no, 35 millimeter. I was yeah, actually so, standing relatively close to them, so it was Oh, so, this is, oh, so this is your Nikon? Yeah, I mean, the Nikon. Not, not, not uh, the other Nikon, the, the N80. The N80, yes, it's yeah. the SLR. Yeah. Interesting. So. Yeah, I'm like, because of the uh, how tight it is, I thought it was going to be the, uh, yeah. that it was going to be the 50. Right, cool. it's hard to tell. Some, but, well, the 35 and the 50 can be very similar just depending on how close or far away I'm standing. But I was standing pretty close because there was a fence line from their backyard to where I was walking, and they um, were just right there. So, and you know, actually, the dogs were on the leash this time, I think, but I was able to manage without getting drug off. So, <laughs> it was good. <laughs> That's it for those. Again, uh, great work. That, thank oh, you for sharing thank that. You. I mean, I've, I've been enjoying. I mean, there's so many. Uh, so, I've seen so much of your work over uh, over a period of time. That was good. That that, that was a, a great uh, slice. But again, okay, it's just, just what I wish I could, we could share so much more. You're like your band oh, wow. work. Your uh, again, I I'd like to see. Uh, the, I think I have actually seen some of the rodeo work, but that was uh, a while ago. But yeah, yeah. again, so. Whoever's watching this, look her up. Go to her Instagram. Start just scouring. It's you're you're not going to be disappointed. It's, there's a lot of good stuff to see. Well, I appreciate that. Thank you for having me on here and showing an interest in my work for sure. Uh, I have a I see one or two more questions. Let me. Uh, I mean, I've got a few things written over written over that way. Yeah. yeah uh, so, <laughs> one, do you have, are, are, do you have any projects in the work? Um, well, okay, so a lot of the series that we just went through is part of a project I'm working on called Roots Run Deep, Roots Run Deep, and it's okay. basically about um, what you've seen, like, different generations in small town American South, uh, just kind of, like, passing down kind of, like, their culture, their lifestyle, and how, I don't know, it's just focuses on the roots of small towns like that. Um, so I've got a show coming up March 14th is opening night at Gallery Box. And um, so I'll be showing a lot of that work there. And um, mm -hmm. and then in 2025, I have two shows um, at a couple of museums that wow, I'm nice. working on. So. Very cool. So that's about it. Yeah, for so my project. No, that that's that's a nice that, that's a nice thing. So, uh, are you are you looking at potentially again? Books are always nice. Like, are you are are is, it, are, is it like your end game uh, potentially galleries, or are you thinking of like a, a book? Are you uh, I don't know. Oh, do, you, really, do you sell? Do you yeah. sell this? Do you like if a person wanted to buy sell, your work yeah. and not go to a gallery because they're like a thousand miles away? But they wanted yeah. to buy something if you do you uh do you have like online portals to sell? Yes, I do. And I actually have just sold, I think, about eight prints of mine, uh, my musician series, my, my musician work that sold. And then um I feel like yeah, it was pretty much musician stuff, but I definitely have like fine art prints that I offer for people that want a custom print made, I definitely can make to order. Um it's just something that all this is still kind of new for me just within the past two or three years um, because right. I just decided to get away from like my commissioned work for showing. I want to show people how I see the world, not how right. the client wants me to see it. And um, so that I feel like this is just starting, you know, beginning. That's a great beginning. Yeah, it's a great so, beginning. So if this, is the be take, yeah. <laughs> if this is the beginning. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Well, I don't want to uh, take uh, make a book yet till I feel like I know my project is complete because I've made books in the past and I'm like, oh, I wish I would have had that image in there or, you know, waited to, to that image was created. Yeah. Well, there's always uh, 
five years down the road, you do a, a re-release of the book. There's a, there's a number yeah. of photographers that have uh, re-released the same, well, by re-release, okay. obviously, yeah. it's the same thing. And like suddenly you just change the cover, you throw in two extra mm-hmm. pictures, and you're like, ooh. Uh, yeah, <laughs> that's a good one. I know. I, I feel like um, right now I just, it's sort of like patterns. I know through the patterns of my work, um, just from shooting a lot, and then I pick up on those patterns. and habits and that's kind of what directs me with where I need to go in my work uh but I do feel like I'll be doing more rodeo stuff rodeo season is probably coming about you know for spring early summer is when they usually and in the fall so I'll have to figure out that and then there's a chicken show that I want to go uh my friend's daughter shows chicken so if you see any chicken on my feed that's that's what's going on with that. <laughs> got it. Yeah, I got it. It's just, it's just, yeah. Again, I would have never thought of a chicken show. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, they're really popular right now. So, so, and yeah, I just feel like embracing the Southern culture because for so long I wanted to move away from my hometown, and I did. And I feel like um, it made me appreciate home a little bit more, you know, because it's mm-hmm. where my family is, and I'm more a homebody than I ever realized. So. So where where did you go to? Well, you said you you had well, gone away for ten yes. years. So basically, I lived in New York City briefly. That was another lifetime. That was with my first marriage. So obviously, that doesn't count anymore. But hmm. um, and then I lived in Charlotte, North Carolina, which is still the South, but it's more banker South. It's kind of like new money and stuff like that. Um, and then you know I lived where. I feel like there was somewhere else. Well, obviously downtown in the Birmingham area as well. But as far as it goes with um, traveling, um, you know, everywhere from like Australia, which I literally wow. almost moved to Australia after college. And that's another story. So <laughs> I mean, another podcast, but that's cool. um, yeah. So I feel like I did a lot of traveling. Um, and to me, that really did. That was education for me you know to know where I wanted to be and so I feel like I don't know like I've just become more of a simplified person as I've gotten older where I feel I'm not complacent I just feel content you know I feel content with where I am and I don't foresee me moving anywhere um, from here I want to be a big fish in a small pond (laughs) that works that works yeah I hear you so you know, and I just like it here. The weather, everything. It's just who I am, I guess. So. Well, again, it's also good that you're there for them. Like, they're lucky to have you there because you're going to, again, not, not to make them famous while they're like the Kardashians and stuff like that, but yeah. far more important to them is the, that you're going to have a record that one day people are going to look back on. But you, if you look at the all the the, the pictures that, we as photographers like to look back on and go, oh my God, like that's so cool. And it's it's pictures of people doing like nothing. And yeah. you're like, oh my God, yeah. those are amazing. You're going to have an entire beautiful record of this, of this area that's going to tell about these people's history that won't even be aware that they were photographed that right. whole time. And you know what? Mount Olive, Alabama may not be Mount Olive, Alabama because it, it's not even a city. It's like a, a not a township. It's um, what is, it's unincorporated Alabama. Okay. So this, region that I live in, it's not even a city um, when it comes down to it. But I feel like it will dissolve in the future as the suburbs kind of come in and just sort of take over. So I just right. feel led. I've always been intuitive when it comes to shooting and when it comes to being where I need to be. And I feel this is where I need to be. So I feel content with where I am. Excellent. So. Oh, I see. Uh... I see the puppy back there was trying to uh, to get in there. Oh. Yeah, he there wants she some, goes. He wants, uh, I'm going to let him get in the screen for some time because <laughs> he likes to. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so. I, I, yeah I, I can't call him. He seems to be just wanting the profile, but that's a, that's a strong yeah. profile. Yes, <laughs> oh, there we is. go. Oh, there we go. <laughs> Uh, so just make sure I'm, uh, let's see, blah, blah, blah. I think I have, I think I've actually managed to uh, ask everything I wanted to ask and then probably then some. So. Well, I'm so well. Good. I think it was a lot of fun. I enjoyed actually speaking with you instead of just like seeing your post. I can hear your voice now. 
So. Yeah, and so hopefully with that, uh, hopefully you can get that cleared out of your head next time you're reading. That you're not stuck with his voice. <laughs> and hopefully, yeah, I feel like no, you, you obviously, I feel like the northern. See, I've married a midwestern, so his okay. accent is so neutral. But I feel like mine is more like a sing song, and yours is yours isn't like a Boston a Boston accent. It's very yeah. Uh, I, I, I don't yeah. Good. I don't have. I don't have the thick uh, Bronx accent that a lot of my family yeah. has and, and my friends all do back home. But like, if you, you give me a drink, set me in a room with them, we, set me in a room with them and suddenly it'll thicken up just a bit, but it was never well, quite as. You know, it's crazy. The longer I've been here in Alabama, the thicker my accent has gotten. Cause when I was doing more traveling and I was at university and I was around a lot of other people when it comes to not just being from the South, I felt like I pronunciated my words better, but now I'm getting lazy. So, so I'm going to have to work on it, you know? Yeah. Well, whatever it is that endears you to the, uh, to the people you're, that are in front of your camera, you're doing it. So don't Thank change you. anything that's going to, uh, to get in the way of that. Thank so, you so much. I'm so happy that you, one, that you said yes to come on to the podcast Two, because it, I actually forget the two. Just this is a continuation of one. It, it allows me to uh, to actually kind of meet you, although we're thousands of miles apart. But having again, feeling that I knew you a little bit from uh, your posts yeah. all the time, but now I can actually say it was good that I've actually spoken to you and I know more, and uh, and it, may, it makes everything that much better. So again, thank, thank you. you so much. And I just appreciate likewise, the, the backstory. Yes. Thank you, because I love seeing all the photographers coming on to your interviews because it really introduces me to so a whole other group that I would have not have known without your introduction to them. So I enjoy following cool. you as well on your channel. Thank you. I'm hoping to make this interview with lots and lots of people because I want more. Again, one, I enjoy meeting people. So this is a perfect thing for, for me because I mm -hmm. love to talk. And I love to meet people. I love to talk photography. I like to find out how people do things. So since we all do it differently, although there's shared uh, shared things, it's nice to know, oh, well, we actually see eye to eye and that kind of thing. Or mm -hmm. uh, how is it possible you managed to get that that way when I would? So again, I learn, uh, the people that watch learn. And in the end, it gives me a reason to just meet people and talk. So, hey. Yeah. <laughs> So, I loved it. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Again, please give the uh, puppies a kiss for me. And uh... um, he's passed out. So. Okay. So <laughs> take care. Uh, and thanks for your time. And thanks for your, your work and all the info. And uh, I will be following you. And, I, and everybody else thank watching this, you have to follow her. Aww, so, thank you. Too. All right. Oh. Hey. Au revoir. And uh, for here, since it's late nighttime, bonsoir. And uh yeah. Bonne journée for you. It's, it's obviously daytime. <laughs> yes. Well, thank you so much. My pleasure. You have a you, good one. You too. Okay. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Say bye, Rio. <laughs> bye. Bye, Rio. Bye, bye. <laughs>